Hey guys, our devotion today is from Leviticus chapter 20, verses 1 through 8. But before we look at that, I want to remind you that today, let's be in prayer for Tabitha Liptrap and Jackson Furtick. We're continuing on in the theme today of just wanting to keep our focus on God. And you see, today we're looking at the fact that God is Jehovah. Um, but it's got this word behind it, this M Kadash which is a Hebrew word that means God, the God who makes you holy, the God who sanctifies you, the God who sets you apart. Leviticus, um, in this particular chapter, is one of those ones where he's teaching uh, the Israelites what it means to be holy, what it means to be God's people, how they ought to act. And he's going through this list of sins. If you read through that entire chapter, you'll see all these different things that he's talking about. Hopefully, they already knew some of this stuff. These are There's some disturbing sins in here. He's talking about worshiping other gods with child sacrifice. And he's, he goes into all these different sexual sins. And I think we can imagine that most of the Israelites probably knew in their heart that these things are wrong. Um, but, you know... It's possible that they can go to these places, especially since the land that they're going into, they're going to be surrounded by people who do not understand the difference between right and wrong and what pleases God and what is offensive. They're going to be living amongst people who worship these gods, and God specifically needed them to know that they were to be sanctified. They were to be set apart, and he was the one to sanctify them. He ends up that chapter, chapter 20, by saying, because I'm holy, you're my people, and you need to be holy too. If you have time today, I want to encourage you to flip over to Exodus chapter 31 and begin reading in verse 12, because this is another time where this name, this M. Kadash, uh, the God who makes you holy, I'm the Lord who makes you holy, is used this time as Moses is on the the mount receiving the law uh, from God, Mount Sinai, and he's about to, to go back down and find the golden calf and all that. But anyways, here God um, reveals himself in this way again. It's interesting here because... Uh, he also talks about the Sabbath day. And when you look at the creation account on that seventh day when God rested, he made that Sabbath day. He uses the same kadash word about that. He sanctified it. He sanctified that day. He set it apart. He made it holy, different from all the rest of the days. He said there's six days, common days, days that you can work and you can do what you need to do. But on the seventh day, it's going to be a holy day set apart. And that even that basic image of a week and having that one special day is an image of what God was doing for the people of Israel. He was setting them apart from the common. They were to be special. They were to be holy, just like him. And he was the one, just like he was the only one that could sanctify the Sabbath day. He's the only one that could sanctify the people of Israel. I just want to read a little bit of this passage to you because it's so interesting. Um, it says, Then the Lord gave these instructions to Moses, Tell the people of Israel, Be careful to keep my Sabbath day. For the Sabbath is a sign of the covenant between me and you from generation to generation. It's given so you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. You must keep the Sabbath day, for it is a holy day for you. Anyone who desecrates it must be put to death. Anyone who works on that day will be cut off from the community. I really just think that this is an interesting passage here. It lets us in to understand a little bit about who God is. The Sabbath day was not just another religious practice. It wasn't just something. God didn't do anything without a meaning. And he didn't ask the Israelites to do anything that didn't have significance, that didn't teach them about who he was. Um, and so what he wanted them to learn today was that they were going into a land, um, a land of people that were unholy, unsanctified, that did not have a relationship with God, and they needed to understand that it was the Lord God who was able to sanctify. 
And we need to know that too. Of course, we know we don't clean ourselves up. It is the Lord, thank goodness, who sanctifies us, who makes us holy and only him, uh, not ourselves. So let's just spend some time worshiping him today, thinking about him and thanking him that he is the one. He's the Lord, the Lord Kadash, Jehovah Kadash, the one who makes us holy. God bless you guys.